Well, it's quite wonderful because I am in Johannesburg, South Africa, and I'm actually sitting in my mother's garden. And behind me, we have John and Jono, who are setting up the shoot because my wonderful friend and colleague, Dudu Msomi, is going to be interviewing me. So her crew arrived this morning. Dudu has not yet arrived, but I promise you, I will introduce you to Dudu. In fact, I've got a wonderful interview with Dudu on YouTube, but Dudu is an executive leadership coach in South Africa. And as John and Jono behind me were saying earlier, she is a force of nature. But before Dudu arrives, what I wanted to share with you this morning, because it's morning in Johannesburg, um, different times in different parts of the world. And in Atlanta, it is a very, very early morning. So to my Atlanta colleagues, friends and LinkedIn associates, you might uh, only be seeing this recorded. But the point I wanted to make was the concept of connection, conversation and collaboration in relationship building. Because this shoot that is happening right now, so if you're hearing noise and bustle, it's because we're setting up to shoot an interview, really was a result of three things. It was, first of all, a connection. So Dudu and saw me, saw my profile on LinkedIn and saw that I was doing a communication power hour. Again, the power of connection. She joined the Power Hour and I was very impressed by her presence and we had a great conversation, Dudu and I, in my Power Hour. But then Dudu had the insight to then have a conversation with me and set up additional time to really connect. Well, then I got to know Dudu and I interviewed her on one of my platforms, right? Conversation. And now what we're doing today is we're really collaborating. And so often we meet remarkable people, be it in person or online, and we have this connection, right? And then we do nothing about it. And for years I've been speaking about networking and authentic relationship building. Networking is about nurturing your existing network in a very authentic way. It's about being a go-giver as much as a go-getter but we still have to have certain strategy in how we do it. And today's interview, which I am so looking forward to because usually I'm the one doing the interview and today Dudu's going to be interviewing me. And it's a very insightful interview because she speaks about wisdom and the wisdom of the journey. And one thing is for sure, I know all of you have overcome enormous obstacles to get to where you are today. And certainly moving from Johannesburg, South Africa to Atlanta, Georgia, required a lot of resilience and tenacity and building new relationships. But the importance of think about it, just take a moment and think about the people you've met, particularly virtually during the COVID period, who you've met, and then think about, did you take advantage of really connecting real conversations, follow up and collaboration. And there's so many ways to follow up. Dudu and I, in creating this event today, followed up by being in touch. I interviewed her, she's about to interview me. You're seeing the camera set up behind me, which I thought would be quite an interesting thing to do. But it took people going, we've just never met. And what's so interesting about Dudu is that we've never met in person. We have only met virtually. And today we're taking that relationship to a whole new level. And it just got me thinking about all of us. We all want the same thing. We want to have people in our lives who go out of their way for us, who are givers, who are concerned about us, to help us promote our careers, who help us develop ourselves. But in order to have people in our lives who do that for us, we have to be the people who do that for them. So I want to introduce you to John. John, if you don't mind just coming in and then we'll have John. This is John. Hello, Nadia. Hello, John. What a delight to see you after all these years. Yes, so John, we first yes. met how long ago? Uh, cheap as it would have been back in the 80s, early 80s, right. somewhere when around When I there. was working as a presenter for MNET Correct. Television. And Correct. of course, we haven't changed at all, have we? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> We're just more interesting and more seasoned. Yes. So. In your opinion, John, right now, what we're doing right now is about to set up an interview. And if you want to grab a chair and get more comfortable, please do. Correct. We're doing this very spontaneously. This Thank kind of interview, it. bring a chair, come talk to this wonderful group of people who are joining us. Tell us, you know, we're talking about, Dudu has hired you to set up this interview for us. Correct. What is the value of 
creating content in a digital age? So I think I think you've got to look at the way the world has changed um, in terms of how we uh, consume content. I think that's been the most significant. So before we always used to tune into TV. We knew eight o'clock on a Wednesday, my favorite show was on. And I think the world has changed completely now because it's what they call content on demand. Mm -hmm. So in other words, if I'm following Naja, and I know she does lots of interesting interviews. The wind or, is now blowing, so my yeah, camera's blowing, yes. Or Dudu, yes. um, who does the series on wisdom where she talks to people who've lived very interesting lives and discusses the things that have uh, created meaning for them and share their experiences, et cetera, et cetera. So if you follow something like that, you can now watch it. And I think the joy of it is you can literally watch it on any device, your phone, mm -hmm. TV, whatever you want, but when you choose to do it. So it could be just before you go to bed. It could be while you're waiting somewhere at an organization for an interview. You can just watch something on your phone and plug in some headphones. And I think that's the biggest and most fundamental Thing. Uh, so um, a yeah. couple of things you and I were talking about when doing interviews and you even said to me because you were watching some of my stuff and you said Nadia don't forget to plug your microphone how important that is and I do have an external microphone and sometimes I forget to use it so just the little things when you're creating content now the bar has been raised Correct. it doesn't have to be perfect but how important is sound so I think sound I think people underestimate sound and I think that sound can, uh, put it this way, the quality of your video can be reduced greatly if you don't pay attention to sound. And I think the technology has changed so vastly over even the last five years where you now get USB microphones. At, I mean, all you've got to do is go onto Amazon and type in USB microphones and you will find a vast array of really good technical microphones from little Lavalier mics, you know, the, what we would call right. them, uh, the clip-on microphones to actually standing ones that people use in podcasts, et cetera, et cetera. Now, because I am doing this in my garden office in Johannesburg and not my office in Atlanta, I don't have all my equipment. So I'm not 100% sure what you're going to think of the sound. <laughs> yeah, so I, 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 I can't hear the sound <laughs> that you people are hearing, um, but I can see that uh, Nodge is using a pretty advanced uh, webcam with a decent microphone in it so i would i would imagine it's pretty good but if you're doing interviews on your phone or you're doing something in an office or something like that i think an investment on a little microphone a, just a, a reasonable quality microphone that either goes directly into your phone or into the side of your computer i think uh, it's really, really worth the investment and make a big, big, big difference to all the videos. Now, of course, today we're doing a professional shoot with lots of cameras. And I'm excited, uh, John, because I do promise I will post that interview so that everybody can actually see it. Correct. So we're doing a three camera setup here so that we can do close ups on Dudu um, and Nadja. I'm going to try and show everybody. Yes. And uh, I don't know if you people can see it in the background. So we would have what's a wide shot. We will be able to see the two of them sitting in this beautiful garden. Wave at us, Jono. <laughs> yeah, in a beautiful garden in, in Johannesburg on a beautiful sunny morning, uh, which is unusual at the moment. We yes. haven't had sun for 10 days. It right. Feels like we should be in Europe or something. <laughs> um, but we want to be able to see that beautiful setting. And then we want nice close ups when people are discussing things where there's. Uh, authentic meaning behind the content that's being shared to you, which I know is what is a big purpose in Dudu's uh, series. Yes. To share learnings of wisdom and life. Um, and you want to be able to see and hear those people talking uh, about those experiences that they've had, which has made them come to the conclusions that they, they've come to. I love it, John. And the thing is that I promise you, Dudu hasn't arrived yet. So by the time Dudu arrives, I should probably let John get ready to carry on doing his work. Yeah. But John, thank, thank you. you so much for thank joining you everybody. me. Thank you, everybody. Nice thank to meet you. you. John's last name is Caldwell. Cal Calderwell. Culverwell, John Culverwell, and John, get people's names right. That's really important that you do that. John, you would think after 30 years, I know that. I don't think I'm going senile. I just think that it is overload. But John Culverwell, John, how do you remember people's names? And that's something important is what I would do is then either rhyme it with something or write it down, or if the name is something like 
I have a friend whose name is Shimoni. So the way I remember her is Shimon Peres's knee, Shimoni. So just make a habit. John, my apologies for not getting your name absolutely right in that moment. But if that happens, just be gracious, apologize. <laughs> you would think you would know and move on. But people's names are very, very important. And in classes, we do a lot of name memory, name association. One of the things uh, somebody who speaks about remembering people's names always says is, if I said to you, here's $100 or a thousand rand to remember three people's names that you've just met, you would. And often the reason we don't remember people's names is we're just not focused. So whether you do, I know John because I know another John and today was easy for me because it was John and John O and do do I know and do do um, the name was easy. When I first met Dudu, I thought about, we used to speak about Dudu as going to sleep. So it's just things that help you remember people's names, whatever they are. But my purpose of today's conversation really more than anything was to talk about the importance of follow-up because follow-up can result in all kinds of things. And you have to be very disciplined about following up because it's so easy to just meet a whole lot of people, leave an event with a card wad, not take the time to link in with that person, not take that time to have five minutes of a conversation. And so much of what I've been speaking about during COVID is that it was very alienating on some levels because you didn't have in-person connectivity. But what it did was give us an opportunity to meet a broader cross-section of individuals. I met people from around the world. But like any relationship, if you don't follow up with those people, you miss out on what could happen. And today, what's happening is an interview here in Johannesburg, South Africa, and a result of two people who took the time to connect and two people who also said, what can we do for each other? It wasn't only, Dudu, what can you do for me? Nadia, what can you do for me? It's how do we assist each other? So John Culverwell being wonderful, assist, helping us in bring this uh, video to you and Jono. So we've met now John and Jono and just wishing you a wonderful weekend. And please take a moment and just write down three people that you thought about while I was talking that would be advantageous if you took a moment and said, what if I followed up? What if I had a conversation with this person? What if I said, what can we do for each other? And it's really one of those things that it's very simple, but so easy to overlook and so easy to overlook at a time where there's so much going on in the world and there's so much distraction and there's so much clutter and there's so much anxiety. So sometimes taking that 10 minutes to further a conversation with somebody, find out what their biggest challenge is, get to know how you can assist them. It's simple to do, but so often overlooked. Wanted to point out one other thing to you today is I am not using my usual tripod camera setup for this, but I am looking into the camera and I did work as hard as possible to make sure that I was eye level into camera. Because remember, it's counterintuitive. One wants to look down at the other people who are speaking. I want to look down at the people who are chatting and writing comments. But when you are speaking, discipline yourself to look into the camera, even if you then look down and cheat it at the people who are on your call. So look forward to bringing you the full interview with Dudu and Somi and just the reminder to keep connecting, having conversations and collaborating. And as I end this broadcast, I am now trying to find where end broadcast is. Lovely. You should have your mouse as close to as possible so you can end. And I thought I'd end with something else that I actually filmed here in Johannesburg, South Africa. So how often are you... Oh, well, you know what happened? It didn't start. So we have to, you know, this is what happens live all the time. We're still live because I wanted to play you a video that for some reason didn't work perfectly. So as we end the broadcast, I say, wishing you a wonderful rest of the weekend. Stay calm if your technology doesn't work. Stay looking into the camera at all times and cheat it by looking down at the people in your meeting and then going back to the camera.